Hello, this is Mike, and this is Joysticks and Sliders version 1.5. This is a new version of the overall tutorial video, which includes all of the features that have been added since its initial release. And here's a list of what's new in version 1.5. Joystick Ease Bias allows you to assign different eases to your layers connected to your rig. The new Path Flipper Setup tool is very useful for those who like to rig path shapes. It'll flip your path shape in an interpolation-friendly way. As a companion to the Move to Parent Comp function, you can now easily move controllers back to their original comps with Move to Child. And now you can convert your rigs to SVG with the help of Body Movement, the amazing extension by Hernan Torisi. As a couple smaller updates, unbinding rigs and updating path shapes now reads your controller from the drop-down menu, so you don't need a timeline selection. And now you can unbind individual layers from your rig instead of unbinding everything at once. <laughs> Sliders is a pose-based rigging system for After Effects. This video assumes you're very comfortable working and animating in After Effects. Now, to create a joystick rig, you must animate your layer and properties into an origin pose, then a right pose, left pose, up pose, and down pose. And let's pretend these three layers represent all the layers and properties used to make this head rig. Joysticks and Sliders takes these poses and turns them into code and processes them into expressions that are controlled by a virtual joystick. To rig a joystick in After Effects, there are just a few rules. The origin pose must be set with keyframes on the very first frame of your timeline, and your extreme poses must live on each successive frame afterward with no empty frames in between. And any property that you would like to rig must have a keyframe for every pose, whether it changes in value or not. Here are three little basic face shapes on a head. With these few shapes, I'll plunk down a handful of keyframes to different properties on the very first frame of my timeline to indicate the origin pose. Hitting the page down key, I'll advance to the next frame where I put down my next pose, which represents my right pose. Now I'll move ahead and create my left pose. Here I'm going to use one of my setup tools, Paste Origin. This grabs the pose from my origin pose and pastes its keys to my current frame. From here I build my left pose. Looking at my keyframes, now you'll see I've already got something wrong with my right pose. It's missing keyframes on properties that do not change. To fill those in, I'll select my layers, hold Alt, and click Paste Origin. That will paste your origin pose without overriding any keys you've already set. Now I'll move ahead to create the up pose. We'll paste origin, create that top pose, and then we'll create our bottom pose. Now with our layers selected, we can hit U to see our animated properties and make sure that our keyframes are good with no gaps. And now we can click the joystick button. Give it a name, and boom, this is your joystick. It's a small solid parented to this dashed rectangle. If you prefer to use a null instead of a solid, you can hold down Alt while pressing the joystick button. These properties that we've rigged are now bound to this joystick controller, and even once your properties are bound, you can still animate on top of them. If you'd like to go back a step and adjust the poses, you can select your controller from this drop-down menu and click the Unbind button. This brings you back into rigging mode where you can adjust your poses. You can select those layers again and rebind them to your existing joystick by finding the joystick in your drop-down menu and clicking the Bind button. Here's a pro tip. If you want to unbind only specific layers from your rig while keeping the others bound, you can select them in your timeline and hold Alt when you click Unbind. So this works with any property that is numerically based, but what about animated masks and shapes? Well, those too can be rigged. Let's animate the base shape of this head by animating its vertices, and while we're here, I'll show you another setup tool, the Path Flipper. Set your first vertex as your center flipping axis. And it's best to work with shapes with symmetrical topology, meaning you have the same number of points making up the right part as the left. Now with the path property selected, click the path flipper. This will mirror your path shape without making the points fold over on top of one another and play nice when they interpolate. Now I'll create the up pose and down pose. Let's bind it to our joystick. You'll see that it doesn't update in real time. For this, you need to click the Update Path Shapes button to bake keyframes onto your shape property. Anytime you want to adjust the motion of your joystick, just remember to click that button and any bound paths will update as expected. 
I'm going to switch over to another head rig of mine to show off a new feature called Joystick Ease Bias. If you have a layer rig to a joystick, you can select it and click the Ease Bias button. This creates a pseudo effect that communicates with the expressions on your rig properties. You can slide the influence of each direction between 100% and negative 100%. Use this to adjust how your elements distribute themselves as you animate between extremes. Subtle use of this feature can push the illusion of depth and parallax in your 2D head rigs. Ease Bias also works with rigged path shapes. Now moving on to switch templates. They allow you to toggle the visibility of certain elements on your joystick rig according to the position of your joystick controller. For example, for some characters, you might want a different mouth visible on the left, center, or right. And to set it up, you just make sure all versions are in your comp and rigged to your joystick. Then you create a switch template. Copy only the layers you want to swap and paste them into the switch template. Now place them around your template according to where you want them to be visible. Now go back to your main comp and find your switch template from the drop down and your joystick layer and click bind. The opacities of your layers now switch on and off according to where your joystick is placed. Small tip, switch templates work on matching layer names, so the layers in your switch template must match those in your master comp and changing their names once bound will break their expressions. This also means the items in your switch template can be nulls with the correct layer names instead of actual copies of your assets. And unbinding is simple. Just confirm from your drop down and unbind. Here's a little stress test I made to show that you can really add a ton of assets to your switch templates. And that sheep's head we saw earlier, that uses switch templates to swap identical ears to essentially change their stacking order to move in front of and behind the head shape. Considering how complex your joystick rig can be, it might be wise to have it live solely in its own composition to use as a pre-comp in a parent composition. To give you better access to your animation, you can move your controller to the parent composition. When you do this, your controllers will turn red to indicate that they are now being controlled by a joystick in your parent composition. Don't delete the red controls though because they are still working as a middleman to control your rig. Any animation that was on them has been moved to your parent composition. And even updating path shapes works from your parent composition. And you can always move your joystick back to its original composition by clicking to child. The animation moves with it again and uh, you're back where you were. So, imagine if you could take each direction of your joystick controller into separate slider controllers. This is the concept behind sliders. Sliders can be very useful both in character rigs and in motion graphics or pretty much anything else. If you've worked in 3D and dealt with pose libraries or blend shapes, this is going to look familiar. Your first pose, as usual, is your origin pose. Then each pose thereafter is a variation of that pose. And the same rules apply as with joysticks. All properties must be keyed on each pose, whether they change or not, and poses must be set sequentially from the very first frame of your timeline. With all your layers selected, you hit Create New Slider Null. When you bind, every pose except your origin pose will become a slider property on a new slider null. You can mix the values of your sliders in any way you wish, and there's no limit to the number of sliders you can make. Every pose can also be dialed to a negative value for an inverse pose. Now we have a bunch of easy controls that allow us to mix our poses together to create any number of gestures. It's recommended to clearly label these sliders. Slider nulls must not have any additional effects besides your slider controllers. And remember that they control your poses by stacking order, so rearranging them might mess you up. Try playing around with path shapes and sliders. With a little planning, you can animate different vertices of a path independently, creating elegant looks that were previously impossible with After Effects. Unlike joysticks, sliders live in the effects panel of your slider null, so they're out of the way from your stage. If you prefer to have a UI representation of your sliders on the stage, you can create UI sliders. You can select either individual slider properties or the slider null itself and create visual representations of your sliders with any animation transferred to them. Don't remove your slider null because it is still acting as a middleman to control your properties. You can adjust the horizontal vertical orientation of these, their size, limit, and adjust clamping. You can animate with these or just use it to show off how your rig is built. And if you decide to go back to using the sliders in your effects panel, you can select your slider arrows and delete UI sliders. 
This will remove the UI sliders from your stage and transfer their animation back to the sliders in your effects panel. And just like joysticks, slider nulls can be moved between parent and child compositions. You just have to make sure you've deleted any UI sliders before moving your slider null between comps. You can move it to the parent and then back to the child without much fuss. And yes, the joystick and slider expressions are now compatible with Body Move-In. Body Move-In is an extension being developed by Hernan Torisi that converts animation from After Effects to code for use on the web. And with the help of Lottie, that code can be converted to animation for iOS and Android. Now, I'm not an expert in this stuff, and it's a rapidly evolving field, so I can't guarantee a bug-free experience. But please enjoy playing around with this in Body Move-In, and uh, I'd love to hear how it goes. And that's it. Try out joysticks and sliders and rig everything. 